With the release of Shaman, every archetype is now playable and bears the question, which one is the best? So today, I figured I'd go and rank every archetype relative to each other and try to figure out which ones are the strongest. Now I was going to wait until 2.0 fully released to make this video, but I realized a fairly large number of players probably want some idea of which archetypes to play prior to the update dropping. Now I imagine the content team will tweak and balance the archetypes over the next few months, but so long as the archetype doesn't get a complete rework, I believe this video should still remain relevant. In terms of how I'll actually rank the archetypes, there's three criteria I'll be evaluating on a scale of 1 to 5. Damage, survivability, and funness. Damage pretty much speaks for itself, but basically I'll look at how good the archetype's damage is relative to the other options available for the class. As for survivability, it doesn't necessarily mean how many defensive buffs are available for the archetype, but rather how defensive and sustainable the playstyle of the archetype is. For archetypes which need to have low HP to do damage, <coughs> fallen, uh, this will be a rather low score. And the final criteria is funness, which is 100% subjective, but I hope that even if you disagree with this ranking, you'll still see where I'm coming from. For archetypes which get the same score out of 15, I'll organize them based on which archetype I like more conceptually. And the last disclaimer I wanted to put in is just because an archetype appears low on the list does not mean it's unviable. I think the balance changes have gotten to a point where even if there is a quote unquote bad archetype for a class, it's still usable with enough creativity and dedication. Also, yeah, I often don't know what I'm talking about, so this list is no means definitive and will certainly have some issues I overlook. I may make mistakes on this list, so if I place your favorite archetype low on the list, that doesn't mean it sucks. Nah, I'm just kidding. Everything I say is final and undebatably true. This video will be 100% factual. Oh, God damn it! Alright, maybe like 95% factual. Okay, okay, enough foreplay, let's get started, shall we? Coming in at the bottom of the list is Paladin. Wait, please, let me explain this before you go unsubscribe, as I imagine this might seem a bit controversial. Basically, the issue with Paladin is that since pretty much all of its abilities are passive, it doesn't even feel like I'm playing an archetype. Based on how it's designed, I would gander that Paladin was the first archetype made, and as such, I think it lacks the creativity and absurdity the other archetypes bring. Yes, you are super defensive with this archetype, and the fact that with second chance you literally can't die makes this archetype the best for survivability out of all of them, hands down. But, the damage is non-existent compared to the others, and since all of its abilities are passive, I don't find it very fun to play. When I think of Paladin, I think of a team healer and supportive role, but you can't even heal teammates actively, you just regenerate health and avoid dying. It can be fun to basically be invincible, but it's not a big enough draw to counter the lack of activity and damage with this archetype. Coming in next, we got Sharpshooter. Sharpshooter is a weird one, because conceptually I think it's a cool idea, but in execution it doesn't really work well with enemy AI. The playstyle encourages you to stay back from a distance, which is why it's ranked so high in survivability. The issue is, though, its damage is the equivalent of a pool noodle. Compared to the other archetypes, Sharpshooter just cannot compete damage-wise, plus the main draw of Sharpshooter is Twain's Arc, which is very easy to miss unless you're fighting like the two stationary bosses in the game. Also, Phantom Ray, the replacement for Aerostorm, really isn't that good either. I still like the concepts and find it pretty fun for playing casually, but in anything remotely challenging, a sharpshooter just cannot compete with the other options. Next up is Trickster. This might seem shocking to some people since I did say Assassin had really good archetypes, but the more I play Trickster, the more gimmicky it feels. It is a really creative concept, and the bonus health you get from Diversion makes it pretty easy to survive, but the clones just don't do as much damage as I was hoping. Now I understand the clones do need to have a damage reduction, that way your damage output isn't multiplied by 8, but considering how fast they die and the fact that they have a 20 second cooldown, it makes it where in most challenging encounters you're basically just going to be playing Vanilla Assassin. Trickster's damage isn't abysmal, but it feels far less than the other options available for Assassin. Not a bad archetype, but not as fun as the other two options. Okay, I am noticing a trend that I'm just hating on the archetypes with low damage and high survivability, but I promise this is just an anomaly. See? I told you it'd be different this time. Okay, Fallen is weird. I've probably played Fallen more than any of the other archetypes on the list, and while I think it has a great design philosophy, I just can't put it any higher on the list without losing some sleep at night. 
Now, let me first say, Fawn has improved significantly since it was first released in the beta, but it still isn't amazing. You sacrifice your health for greater damage, and while this damage trade-off is mostly balanced, you still need to get your health a little bit too low to make the trade-off completely worth it. The reason why survivability gets a 2 instead of a 1 is because through the recently buffed intoxicating blood, you have greater control over restoring your health. Another minor but still annoying issue is the cooldown for Corrupted. Once you leave the Corrupted state, you need to wait 8 seconds till Corrupted works again. Now, contrary to what some people might say, 8 seconds is a lot. <clears throat> if the Corrupted cooldown did not exist, you could end it to get all your health back and then instantly go back in to keep a more engaging gameplay loop. Again, I like the concept of Fallen, and yes it has proved significantly, but it still has a little ways to go before I can place it any higher. And now onto the lowest mage archetype, Lightbender. Lightbender is another weird one to rank because it has a lot going for it, but also a lot holding it back. Now I do agree that creating a healer that can function well in both solo and group situations is an impressive feat, but my issue comes with how damn repetitive the gameplay is. You summon your cool little orbs and then just spam left click in the occasional heal. Since the orbs have a pretty decent range, there's not a ton of value in freezing enemies or teleporting around. You basically just only use heal. Plus, I have way too much time in this server, so the muscle memory of spamming Meteor keeps interfering with this archetype. That being said, since you do play at a range and have really good heals, it is near impossible to die in the archetype unless you get one shot. What it comes down to is, Lightbender has very repetitive playstyle and lacks the flair of the other mage archetypes. Coming up next is Trapper. Okay, wait, this one I know is actually controversial since every Archer player I know seems to love Trapper, but I have my reasons for placing it so low, so just hear me out. Trapper is not a bad archetype by any stretch of the imagination, and it is well balanced, but I find playing it to be a painfully average experience. I know the appeal is just to be able to spam random shit all over the place, which, yeah, that's fun. At times. But, uh, I don't know. I kind of like to know what I'm doing instead of just casting arrow bomb all over the place and waiting for an enemy to walk into it. Another issue with Trapper is, while it does work great with crowd control, it really falls short against single enemies. Since most of the time I play Windcraft, I'm doing raids or some boss-related activity, I feel like Trapper just isn't ideal as the other options. Now, I will say Grapple Hook is, like, stupidly fun and definitely the saving grace of this archetype for me. Oh, and uh, the infinite mana you get from your traps is cool. But uh, yeah, neat archetype, just not fitting for my playstyle. And now onto another controversial one, I think. Riftwalker. Riftwalker is pretty good, but it feels a little bit too vanilla for my liking. The ability of Windsweeper does let you ramp up your damage very nicely against enemies, and Timelike has a cool effect, but outside of those two, it just feels kind of boring. Part of my issue with Riftwalker is that the archetype is advertised as a mobile one, but really the only mobility upgrade is Blink, which feels more jarring than it does fun. It does have a very standard playstyle, which has good damage and decent survivability, but for Mage in particular, I want archetypes that are a bit more engaging. Oh, look, it's the more engaging Mage archetype. Okay, so balance-wise, Riftwalker and Arcanist honestly feel pretty similar, but Arcanus gets placed higher because it's a more interesting concept and I have way more fun playing it. Arcanus can whip out a lot of damage against large groups of enemies and bosses. The mana bank essentially lets you spell spam until you either die of dehydration or get bored and go to bed. Since you have a triple ice snake and a very satisfying meteor damage, playing Arcanus feels very rewarding. The biggest detriment of all is of course the lack of heal. While this can be circumvented with health potions or health regen, not having active control over your health is very devastating, especially on Mage, which typically requires you to play closer in combat. I don't necessarily think this archetype needs to be buffed, so it can heal, but having no control over your health certainly hurts the viability of this archetype in endgame content. Regardless of that though, I have a blast playing it, and definitely consider it the most engaging Mage archetype. Alright, now we're getting to the good shit. Pretty much every archetype from here on out is going to be both fun and well designed. The first of these is Acrobat. Acrobat is very mobile and works around consistent spell spam. Because of this, Acrobat has very good damage against both bosses and group encounters. Riding Reflex and Hop really help with mobility, and together they mean that the majority of the time, 
you will actually be airborne, which is a great concept and helps with the survivability. The issue is though, this is the only assassin archetype without vanish, and as such, it doesn't really feel as stealthy as I was hoping for it to be. Still a very solid archetype that is good in pretty much all situations, but the lack of vanish is definitely going to knock it down a few points in my mind. And next is the last assassin archetype, Shade Stepper. Similar to Arcanist and Riftwalker, I'd say Acrobat and Shade Stepper are pretty similar from a balance perspective, but because the concept of Shade Stepper fits much better with Assassin's base design, I decided to put it above it. Like I've said before, Shade Stepper is the most similar to 1.20 Assassin, and considering I quite like the design of Assassin, I'm glad this archetype is available. It has pretty great damage against single targets, but isn't completely useless in group settings either. The ability to ramp up damage through the marked ability and also time your attacks is both viable and satisfying to pull off. Since this archetype does have access to Vanish, it has pretty great survivability if you pay attention to your cooldowns. I really have no gripes with this archetype. And now onto the top 5. If you ignore the overly edgy names of the abilities that are either ripped directly from Hollow Knight or sound like a 14 year old emo kids band, then this is a pretty great archetype. I'd say Acolyte has one of the highest skill ceilings out of all the archetypes, as you need to constantly balance your health and damage through the blood pool. While you do lose health pretty rapidly, the fact that you can heal yourself and have some control over your health makes it where survivability on this archetype is actually fairly average. The damage for this archetype is great, and really just feels like an exaggerated version of Shaman's base design, as it sacrifices survivability for damage. I really enjoy the concept of this archetype, and while I might not be good enough to fully enjoy it all the way yet, it's still a very great option. And now, on to Battle Monk. You, along with the majority of the Wind community, probably forgot this archetype even exists, but I find it to be really good and quite slept on. The archetype is all about spell spam and combos, which is pretty much my favorite way to approach combat. Uppercut in particular has a stupidly large area of effect, so you really feel powerful when using it. The spells all do a good amount of damage, and the sustainability of the archetype results in a high damage output. Warscream pulls enemies towards you, which may make survivability a little harder, but also helps with comboing spells. You have a ton of aerial control with charge, and while some people don't like flying kick, which knocks back enemies when you hit them, I find it to be a very fun way to incorporate mobility into combat as well. And now on to the funny lag one, Summoner. Summoner is really strong and really easy to play, so needless to say, I imagine this will be one of the most popular archetypes. With three totems and a ton of minions, you have constant healing and constant passive damage, so basically you can just place your totem and then uh, go leave to get a snack or something. With triple auras and a ton of minions to help you out, this archetype has really great damage and very impressive survivability. I personally like playing more actively than Summoner requires, so in terms of funness, it's only an average experience for me, but I can't deny how damn powerful it is. Next up is Bolt Slinger. I think most people enjoy this archetype, but I'm not sure how many would consider it to be the second best, so let me elaborate. All of Bolt Slinger's spells, yes, even Escape, have the potential to do a ton of damage, which is satisfying on a class designed around high damage output. With the greater spread of Aerostorm, it encourages you to play at a medium distance more so than a long distance, but even with that, survivability on Bolt Slinger is still alright. Guardian Angels are a really great upgrade to Arrow Shield and help the archetype feel powerful at greater ranges. Also, the ability to get 160% walk speed with Frenzy is such a nice addition that may not add a ton in combat, but is still incredibly fun. Bolt Slinger is consistently strong, creative, and fun, which is exactly what I want out of archetypes. And now, onto the number one spot. It is... Ritualist. Of course it's Ritualist. Did you seriously expect anything different from me? Seriously, Ritualist is so great because it can adapt to every situation. Are you trying to deal with damage? Use Mask of the Lunatic. Are you trying to be tankier? Use Mask of the Fanatic. Are you trying to hop around Deadless for the next six hours so you can avoid your real life problems? Use Mask of the Coward. Now, as much as I did want to give Ritualist the perfect score in all three categories, I do have to admit its damage is a little bit lower than the other Shaman archetypes. It's still really good, so like, I'm okay with this. Because you can either increase your damage resistance or run away from an encounter altogether, survivability is great. And the constant switching up of playstyles and seemingly endless skill ceiling makes this archetype incredibly fun. And now, in case you have the memory of a goldfish, here's the list of the archetypes ranked.
So that's the archetypes all summed up. Will I lose my subscribers after spending the last 15 minutes dissing your favorite archetype? Uh, probably. But joking aside, I hope you do at the very least see where I'm coming from, even if you don't necessarily agree. If you do disagree with me and want to explain why I'm dumb and stupid and why Paladin is actually the best archetype ever, feel free to let me know. Just uh, please be nice or else I'll probably cry.